Welcome everyone to the Deep Dive, the podcast that skips small talk and goes straight for the concepts that shape our thinking and behavior. In this podcast, cold expertise is defenestrated as warm philosophy is enthroned in an attempt to explore the field in which we're all scientists looking for answers, living well. Hello world, welcome to another episode of The Deep Dive with Eyal Shai. Today I'm here with Dan Greenwald. Hi Dan. Hey there Eyal, really excited to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, what topic will we be discussing today? So, you know, end of the year, start of a new year, topic that seems to come up again and again, especially now in the world that we live in, is this idea of fear. How fear kind of, you know, runs us, sometimes rules us. And um, yeah, uh, let's have a little chit chat, you know, like homage to uh, uh, ready to go and play with some fear. <laughs> That's great. Looking forward to it. Uh, I'd like you to take the lead and maybe go back in time, take us to a place where fear is something that you're feeling or dealing with. Uh, yeah, sure. So a few things. One, I grew up with a stutter. That's just straight up, you know, that's a big part of me and a big part of who I am. And um, when you grow up with a stutter, at least my story is you try not, you try to avoid shame. Like we all do, like every human being, right? That like shame is the ultimate pain. It's worse than, it's worse than physical pain. It, 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 it really hurts us, you know? And so we're going to do everything we can to try to avoid it. And I, re I remember stuttering from age five on, you know, recognizing, wait a second, almost like a um, outer body looking at myself for lack of a better explanation. And um, was always like determined to figure out how do I change me? That's not a really great feeling, right? Um, but you know, um, a lot of the first half of my life was lived at that fork in the road of being true to myself or avoiding shame. What do you do? Fast forward to age 22, 23, after I did a month long intensive stuttering, um, you know, like therapy for a month, cause I was ready for it. It was at the end of like college that you know, my like, stutter was stopping my growth. I was this like philosophy major and also religion, mind and heart. And, and the, what's the purpose of the self and existential, you know, like that was me. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, and being super honest with myself, my like stutter, it was, it was really, you know, like plateauing me being true to myself. And so I had a real honest decision of, how much do I want to avoid shame or being true to myself? And I reached a point of enough is enough and um, did this month long, did this month long intensive and was determined rewired my like tectonic plates of a human, like physiologically breathing mouth. Wow. And also, so, so let me, let me ask you um, yeah. how, how bad was the stutter? Was it actually, uh, hampering communication in a serious way, uh, more so than just drawing attention, but actually destroying conversations, basically? Absolutely. Absolutely. It was, it was, uh, I got very good. The answer is yes. I was a severe stutterer. The like follow up kind of question that you asked without asking is like, well, what were your ways of coping? Right. So my core way of coping was this idea of like circumlocution, it's called. In my mind, I had my mind was always probably still um, always 12 steps ahead for the sake of survival. So I had it, it was as if I had this bank, I had this bank of words that I knew I could say. So one part of my energy, mind energy was all about like it was really it was really like survival energy. Right was all about like I, you know, like a train station sign, right? Mm. Oh, what can you, you know? And so I ended up 
getting very good at circumlocuting, saying what I could, but at the at the same time, not being true to myself, right? And so, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, you know, when I give, uh, I give this presentation about this concept called this like, courage muscle, which was rooted in like stuttering, right? The idea that each time you lean in versus run away, you grow another strand of your courage muscle. The larger your courage muscle, just like any other muscle, the more we crave to work it out by leaning into things that are hard. And so I'll touch on that in a second, but regarding this like stuttering world, you know, I had a choice to make and I was ready at that point where I wasn't my whole life to really, really own it. Not just pretend to want to want it, but like enough, I'm here, I'm all, and, and, um, I'm all in and, um, what led me to that point. And then afterwards was I saw that the key was not working on the, not working on the like stutter. It was about leaning into the fear. The more I leaned into the fear, the more with things beyond the stutter, Mm -hmm. the more I actually transcended my stutter. I conquered my stutter. My stutter doesn't stop me anymore. This having a discussion, you know, on a video, this used to be one of the scariest things I could, I could do. It's still, it's still not the best feeling, but you know, I mean, it is what it is. Right. And so looking back my stutter, you know, I grew up with this concept of fear, right? Like survival fear of like avoiding shame always wait. And I didn't do a lot of things. Yeah. So so, yeah, I get the sense that you're basically meeting people and you're dreading every interaction because it might end up with some person looking at you very weirdly or even excusing themselves to go someplace else uh, because they don't feel that anything in there is for them, right? I'm sure that if they're your family member, somebody who wishes you uh wishes you well is going to stick around and let you express yourself because they see you in the whole thing but if people are in there doing their own thing and kind of don't really see what they could uh get from from interacting with a uh, with a stutterer and i see that this is the fear um are you implying that it's a sort of a vicious cycle where it's actually coming into the thing with the fear that actually triggers the thing that you fear? Is it that, or is the fear that you, that you learn to lean into is not the fear of shame, a different fear. I think it's always a fear of shame. I'd say, mm. okay. I mean, um, but no, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't really like anticipating it. It was more of a like protection. How do I protect myself? So then I'm not going to even put myself into a position, right? Like, and, and, and when you grow up with that, you just want to be, you, you just want to be normal. You just want to be part of the flow. Uh, you know, you just, and listen, the reality is that the perception I had of myself probably, in fact, I'm pretty sure wasn't the real perception of how the outside world viewed me. It was how I viewed myself. And so if I would be talking about whatever, and I would be stuck in a a block and I couldn't get it out. There was a flow and all of a sudden the flow stopped. And if that might be a second, maybe less, that was minutes in my mind. So that experience, I had to undo a lot of, wait a second, what you perceive is not potentially the reality, right? There And like growing up with that, as you know, everybody's superpowers comes about from something that they struggled with or experienced in a difficult way. And so there I was from a very young age, age five and up, I was determined, how do I change me? How do people change? What's the intrinsic fire of the hero's journey? Like karate kid, top gun, all the Bible stories, wherever you go, you have this story. And it always spoke to me because I wanted to shift me. And then I got obsessed with how do people grow and change and what is it about people and and like not a like a obsession is not a good thing at times right 
how do you perceive like it was such a skewed view of how I perceived myself. But at the same time, I had to undo that to get beyond it. And that's what I did. And this like month long stuttering intensive was ready for it. Right people, right place, dove right in, came out of it. A week later, I was, you know, I got my first job teaching education. The craft of education was what drove me since age five is like, how do people learn and shift? Right. And so that was always in me. And a week after that, uh, month long, I got my first job teaching fourth grade in like Washington Heights, New York City, which is a whole nother trip of a story. Yeah. So what I'm getting is the first coping mechanism is is avoidance, basically. And that is deleting yourself, basically. That's kind of nullifying. I, I, I. I want to use that like language of like scarcity. I would, I would, okay. view, I would say that that was that that was kind of protecting me. Absolutely, absolutely. But I'm saying you were dealing with a condition that made you um, not be able to be yourself, your whole self as you wanted it, your transcendent, a uh, flourishing self. If that is that fair to say? Absolutely. Yeah. And so, I'm, um, what my thought was that by avoiding situations where this thing could be apparent, yes, you were protecting yourself, but you were still not in a place where that kind of shift, that kind of change was the ultimate one, because obviously it's a shift that uh, cost you relationships. And you did want to have the, the whole thing that this world has to offer, right? And that includes conversations. Yeah, and and but here's, here's the deal. Um, It didn't stop me. Right. It's like when we look back on our lives, we have the perception that we, from the viewpoint of our life experience, right. I mean, is that's one way to view it. Mm -hmm. Some would say that that's all that really matters since yourself and the world's here for you. And, but there's also another way to understand yourself. And I think that's, that's done with self-work that's done with the like inner exploration of self. Right. And I, God bless. I had parents that loved me. You know, I had a, I had a little bit of a like interesting family structure in which my siblings were 12 and a half and 16 years older than me, all from the same parents, you know, talk about, you know, uh, you know, raised also, my mom, my mom, God bless, uh, uh, today she would have turned, she would have turned 84, happy to bring her name up here, right? She was a like, Holocaust survivor as a like child that survived in the woods with her mom and dad as a trio. So she had that love. She mm-hmm. never thought it was a big deal afterwards, but it was a big deal. Not many like children where she came from survived living in the, uh, living in the like Carpathian mountains for three years. Wow. running in and out, like insane stories that she started telling towards the end of her life, recognizing, hey, it's a big deal to tell this story. And so, um, you know, also growing up with that of understanding of like, hey, life is short, right? And so th- our, my life, the way that I grew up and, you know, the realities, uh, my uh, stutter really dictated. I had this deep, deep yearning to be in flow state, even before I even learned about flow state from a very young time, because what started messing with my head, right? Messing with my head was why were there sometimes I was fluent and other times I wasn't. Mm. And what I've come to learn is that there were times when I'm in the flow, it was all good. So how, what was that about? So the inner exploration of self, with this deep, fiery desire, survival desire to figure out how do I shift me out of a stutterer to, you know, living dictated by my true self and the fire that is within me as we all have. And, 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 you know, and also being raised, you know, knowing that like this Holocaust, not to leverage Holocaust discussion here, but you're raised in like your foundation that life is short. Yeah. Be on guard. (laughs) Your fear is something that is somewhat of a radar for you also. Right. Um, And so, and so, yeah, I, 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 you know, 
my whole life, you know, like navigating that became obsessed with the self when, in, you know, had a like Kantian moral imperative in college of like, don't complain and bitch about the education, how it didn't help you uncover yourself. And you think it should, that's the source of education, go and do something about it. That led me into becoming a like teacher in the craft of education, right? The craft of how, how do you lead people to lasting learning, deep learning, even if it's math, even if it's whatever subject, but the craft, I, I, that's one of my like love doing deep dives into that, the craft of teaching and learning. But yeah, I mean, but fear, what I've come to learn is this, to like sum up the whole fear discussion, not even sum it up, but everybody has the power to change. Every human has the power to change. That power is that power is like accessed when we can uncover what it is we really want. The reason why it's so hard to figure that out is because we have a human mind whose sole purpose is to keep us alive and survive. And the main way it does that is by creating stories that drive us to act towards safety staying safe, doing, avoiding things that are potentially hard. That's our default mode, all of us. And what does that show? That shows up as fear. Flip side of taking the word fear, scarcity, fear, abundance, courage. Growing your courage muscle is the way to essentially harness fear, which is this innate default mode in every single human. You just put a huge smile on my face. I love it for so many reasons. Um, yeah, so first of all, I should say, it's just my, my perception was that at first you had one reaction to the condition you were in. And then at some point you, you made a shift and made a point to lean into fear, as you say. And then that is where you actually transform yourself in, in a positive way. Because I know so many people that are anxious about things, and you know they uh, and anxiety. I would I would say is the constant anticipation of of fear. It's not even the the thing. It's fear of fear, right? Basically, and leaning into that really resonates with me. And then the last part that you said about safety versus flourishing if I may rephrase it, uh, reframe it like that, that is, that has played a huge part in my life over the, the last couple of years. I think the understanding that there is more to life than living, as I like to say, the understanding that just staying alive, had it been perfectly good, uh, we would not lose so many people to suicide, for example. But the fact is that we see so many people who are alive and healthy physically still not being able to qualify their lives as good um, and going as far as taking their own life, which is tragic. It tells us something about our lives and it tells us that we should be stopping to think so much about how to survive and start thinking a lot more about how to tr- about how to thrive yeah. in, in societies of abundance like ours, you know, which allow it. So obviously some people who are really just looking for their next meal every day, right? You and I can probably say, well, that's fair enough that they are motivated by, um, by fear versus, uh, versus, you know, extreme joy of, of catching the kill and by pleasure versus pain. Those are kind of very rudimentary teachers, right? And they're very successful at what they do from an evolutionary perspective, correct? I think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Go on. And um, yeah. And so I, I, I really want to dig deeper or dive deeper into the, the, the realization because I can understand the fire. And that also um, really relates to my understanding of the kind of emotion in the ancient Greek sense of the word of emotion as being thumos, which is which sits in the lungs where the where the blood is boiled by the by the the inner fire that we have, 
and this is emotion. Um, so I really like the the talk about fire, but that is still, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, not an explicit thought that goes. That's kind of your spirit, right? That you say you've been blessed with, a strong spirit that pushes you forward, that wants to see um, improvement, that wants to live life fully. Um, what about the explicit thoughts about it, the, the framing that you gave yourself in terms of ideas and concepts that were um, in that playing field of uh, leaning into fear? When were the explicit thoughts forming? Stuttering made, made that really easy, right? Anytime I had to get up and like present, anytime, any age, pick an age, doesn't matter, when I, when we got tests back and we had a review and like, I would count the numbers of like, okay, I, I'm going to have to read number 12. Oh my God. Can I read that? Uh, oh shit. I got to go to the bathroom. Right. Like to that extent, to the, to the starting a group in college. And I was the guy who started it. So I had to present and I was freaking out and I was figuring out how can I run away from this situation to the, to, to, you know, to the, fact of after I did that week of intense, that month of intensive, I'm like, stuttering's never going to stop me again. And I got my first job teaching fourth grade. And what was cool about that year, I got the job the day before the first day of school. Why was that happening? Why was there a class? I went there two o'clock and I didn't have any like teaching credentials. There was a dearth of educators like there is now separate discussion, big issue, but separate discussion. And um, two o'clock, 2 p.m., the next morning at eight, picked up my first, my fourth grade class. My class was made up of kids that had just passed summer school or who had failed summer school. That was my awesome. And in New York City at the time, this is 2000, the, the like test, like high stakes tests, right? You, how do you make sure that a school is good? Or, oh my God, how do they, based on their test scores, fourth grade was a testing grade. My like mentor, Linda, amazing rock star of a human and also educator, learned a great deal from her. At the end of the year, she goes, you know how I know you're a really good teacher? Because when your kids were so upset with you, they would come into my office and they would complain about you and they would be angry about you and they never once brought up your stutter. That was low hanging fruit for them, right? So I, just by leaning into it, that fear of, you know, and then... And then, it, and then I, and then I saw like to really take these things that I was learning. It's, I learned really quickly after that. It's not about the stutter. In fact, everyone's got a stutter. What's your stutter? That thing that stops us from being our most authentic, truest self, right? I started like, what's your stutter.com, which people can post their version of their stutter in a photo, right? It's, it's, it's like a type form into notion, something to do on the side, right? But yeah, what I've come to learn right? Is this like, is this framework? It's not just fear. It's about leaning into life and life gets really hard, right? Between ages, I'm going to fast forward a little bit, but between ages, uh, between the years 2012 and 2016, I lost four people really close to me, two of which were my mom and dad, two of which were very close friends on my favorites list on my phone under the age of 41 wow. is what it is. Everyone gets dealt heavy doses of life. That life is really short. Part of about being a like human being, like the suicide. Uh, I want to dive into that in a second. But the way that I see what I've come to realize, right? After those years, 2016 and like uh, 2017, I just had enough. I reached the point of enough. And I kind of like, I needed a system to keep me out of my own way. Keep me in a don't think, just do action so that I could be continuously growing and moving. Because what I've learned is this, people are not happy when we hit our targets. It's not about the like targets because then it's okay. Then what? Then what? Then what? It's about being in a perpetual state of understanding and seeing our own personal growth. That's what the secret is. So what do we do? How do we do that? Right. And so one idea, the first idea, simple, easy, uh, lean into fear because innately that's how that's our default mode, not good or bad, just is what it is. Right. So 
I learned and and looking back, that was the key to transcending stuttering, letting go of stuttering. And the same way how I used to fear the aspects around it, just go into the fear around it without stuttering. Oh my God. You know what ended up happening? Looking back, not even looking for it, but looking back, like, wait, I don't really stutter anymore. Or I do, but it doesn't stop me. I've transcended it, right? And the flow was there more often. And here's what I've learned. A few things. One, it's about the growth, not about the target, right? And um, courage, lean in versus versus running away. Every time you recognize your fear, you say out loud with a mantra, you need to activate. You can't just keep it in the mind. Mind's going to do everything it can to forget how strong we are to keep us like, like you can't do this. Hey, y'all, what are you, what are you thinking? You could do a long <laughs> like podcast, you know, video. What, what are you doing? Right. I mean, that's what mine's yeah. going to keep you safe. And so uh, courage, say fear equals opportunity. Each time you say it, it rewires. It starts to rewire it. Mm-hmm. You say it out loud. It's a mantra. Mantras have powers. The other thing is this concept of state. Okay energy of vitality with which we engage life, all life. Speaking here, playing with my daughter, Hannah Banana, taking your dog for a walk, writing, you know, your significant other, finding a significant other, um, other. we engage life with a certain energy there, right? It's like vitality. That's called state. Just go with me on the terminology for a second, right? Mm -hmm. State is made up of our mental spiritual, and physical health. When one of those are weak, our overall state will be weak. It's kind of like thinking about it like it's a rope made up of these three smaller ropes. Yeah. So the idea is that I started getting into figuring out, hey, what do I need to do to be in strong state and create these like easy to win actions that allowed me to consistently be in a strong state because here's something else. When we're in a strong state, it creates these strong stories that our mind naturally is going to create to drive our action, which leads to strong action, state, story, action, strong state, strong story, strong action, shitty state, shitty story, shitty action. It's really that simple. (laughs) I love it. And, and so I started, so, you know, learning that from like many different people along the way, um, you know, just doubling down and then also recognizing that, Hey, this, our mind's default mode is trying to overly complicate. That's how it keeps us safe. Like working out, right. I can't work out. I missed the live class or I don't have the right sneakers. I can't work out. That's our mind's going to overly complicate. Even when we're trying to line up, what do we need to do to farm our strong state? Right. And it's, it's, um, you know, classic meditation. I'm a, you know, I'm a meditator. Do I do it all the time? No, I totally miss it. But I also monitor how, when I miss it, I'm a Jedi. If I can meditate 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes for whatever reason feels daunting. Oh, I, I know because I've done it. I've tried to line up. I have this tracker and stuff. I don't do it 15. If I met, if I check my box of a win for doing it for three minutes, I do it pretty consistently. Sometimes I sit for five. So that's an example of like, Hey, we know the mind's going to overly complicate what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. How badly do I want to be in strong state? Well, I know what it feels like to be in a shitty state and my God, those, those like shitty stories, if we don't know how to navigate them or why they even come about, they can bring us down a very deep, dark hole. And we weren't, and we're not really taught how to harness ourselves as human creatures. Yeah. Right? I, I want to, I want to ask you a question about, about the, the shitty stories. I think that when you said before that you've been blessed uh, with a number of things, now it occurs to me that you've been blessed also also with the storytelling, because as as harmful as it can be to to confabulate stories that really kind of drive us away from our optimal um, state and story and action. Um, 
what comes to mind are the people that, at least in my eyes, seem to have these stories hidden from themselves. So not explicit, but just kind of, an, um, you know, holes, holes in their psyche that they don't really know how to fill. They don't really know how to approach. And these get them to all sorts of um, seedy places uh, see these states of, of existence and, and places to visit, you know, so I'm thinking addiction, I'm thinking other states like that. Um, what are your thoughts on this in terms of how to even begin to come up with stories? I mean, because the stories can be harmful, but at least you can, you can deal with them because they're explicit. Is there a technique to make things less vague and more explicit so that we can tackle them head on? Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to, because I mean, it starts with being able to deconstruct yourself as a human creature so that you could reconstruct yourself as a human mm -hmm. creature. And, and also understand that we are, it all starts that we are creatures, right? So there are things about us that we know. We know what I was telling you about fear. Our mind's designed to keep us safe and alive. And it does so in three different ways. Homeostasis, our body's measured. It keeps our experiences, memories in this like file cabinet for when it needs to. And then it creates these stories, beliefs in our mind that drive us to act. All of us, all of us, right? And now this concept of state, story, action, the state we're in, we, wow, we can even, we have control over those stories that are naturally going to come up in our mind, we could farm what it means to be in strong state. But that's hard. That's over the long term. Farming isn't easy, right? But you got to wake up every day, every morning, do the same thing, unless you won't have your yield. It won't work. Absolutely. Storms coming. It's the exact same thing. And then this was um, this was something over the last two years that 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 really, you know, has helped me and um I think uh, a number of other people have been through workshops or stuff that I've done, which is this concept of story watch. The idea of we can't always be in a strong state. That's not reality. We're living through a plague, right? It's, I have a baby that wakes me up in the middle of the night, right? I'm not sleeping more than six hours. Some, it, it, it's also the reality. But if I know that I'm not in a strong state, I could be on guard for those stories. And those stories, a whole list of them, many. Um, those stories, when you can capture them, and the easiest way to capture them is by the language of scarcity versus abundance. I am not, I can't. Uh, all of the negative self-talk, those are stories your mind is like creating might not feel good. The mind doesn't care if we're living a fulfilled, happy, or meaningful life. It doesn't care about that. It's a different part of us, our emotions, as you were talking about before, right? Mm -hmm. So if we could capture these stories, state story action, before they turn into action, and this is the process, capture the story, write it down. Don't keep it in your head. Ask yourself, how is this story serving me? The answer of it's not is never an answer. Because we now learned that the mind creates stories to keep us safe. If you could grab onto that story and you ask, how is it serving me? And you grapple and when you can uncover how that I am a piece of shit story is serving you and keeping you safe, then you're in the position of deciding what do you want to do with it? Then you could break it down. Be like, whoa, wait, let me. Let me say, what happens if I do hit post? What happens if I do share this courage muscle concept and see if other stutterers want to learn about it or go and teach fourth grade when I'm stuck? Like, it's leaning into it. But we can't lean into it because our mind is powerful. It's, gonna, it's designed to keep this creature alive. That's default mode, right? So. So one more concept that I think makes it, that ties it all in is that when I take people through this, it starts with how do you deconstruct so you could reconstruct yourself? The first thing we do is understand that we are a the creature and every creature has its unique creature power. Every creature that comes to me, I'm looking out at the Hudson, you have a dog, 
I love watching birds of prey. They're, they're talons, they're soaring. You know, dogs have this emotional ability to connect with us. Their sense of smell. Every creature has their uniqueness, right? Ours is self-awareness. Good or bad. We have the ability to look at ourselves and say, hey, I want to change. A bear could only be a bear. The way how we like harness that, leaning into our fear, farming our state, we're able to harness our creature power of self-awareness and that's what starts to change us. And that concept of story watch, the more you do it, the better you get. And in the like process, it's in this like template in a notion template, right? It's part of this courage muscle training. It asks, what is your, you know, what is your story? How is it serving you? And then it also asks you to identify if there's a thread, a theme. Mine are, is, you know, with many of human self-doubt, I'm stuck building because if I'm stuck, Bill, I got to make it better. So then I do, I don't have to, I avoid shame of putting something out there. Who is this schmo doing this ridiculous, right? I, I've going back as a stutterer, it's what you find is that I would go out on a limb having done this in, with a, a bunch of people a number of times. Um, we have like four or five guiding stories that were formed between ages four and 10. And it just, they just show up again and again, clothed in different experiences. And when I started do, doing this and then like accidentally sharing this with other people, to be honest, it's pretty powerful. It's pretty powerful when you're able to identify those stories and see them again and again and again. And it becomes a superpower, not when you're just recognizing your own, but you start recognizing other people's stories. And so between between all that, that's kind of my system that I lean on pretty heavily. Yeah, that's that's amazing. It resonates with me so much. Um and and I would also like to take advantage of the fact here and just uh go out there and expose myself and my frailties right now and see how it um how it connects to to the thing like one big thing that i see first of all i wanted to um to kind of make the point that the stories also relate to our an um unusual ability of of having logic Right, I, of, of of conceptualizing, saying, uh, of seeing things, how they fit in the world, also through time, and that allows us to think in terms of uh, what's this good for, and then good for, and create these chains of things and go through that. And I agree with you that that fear, um, pain is another thing that you know, we, we really fear. So we really fear the pain. If we do get to the point where we feel pain, that is also aimed at making us survive longer because it gets us away from something that, uh, that puts us, uh, puts our life in risk. And like you say, it's not about good or bad. Uh, well, actually very clearly some situations you should be fearful in and do what's going to save your life. But the logic helps us understand and really um, have a demarcation between things that we fear because they're going to um, risk our life, put our life um, in risk, or things we fear because we haven't really realized yet that where we want to go is live life fully and be flourishing. Um, so both stories we can choose from. Either we want to survive or we want to thrive. And it's up to us to choose. And now I'm going to get to my personal story, um, which starts with uh, at least this you know, vignette. Starts with COVID hitting and me lose, losing my job. And really for many, many, many years, I knew I didn't fit in, in terms of the fact that I was more curious than everyone around me and I didn't get along in the school system. And then I had to do the army service in Israel, which I hated, I, I tried to get out of and I encountered like a, a real life catch 22 situation. So I didn't actually get out of it. 
And then I half-heartedly um, uh, completed my degree in university because it somehow it was kind of a, a compromise because I was it was interesting to me, but I also did it because it was socially acceptable to do it. Um, well, I did skip the part where I lived in the forest. That was kind of courageous, but it ended at some point. And then going back to present time, I made the conscious decision not to chase just any job which will keep me with a salary and make me a human who's accepted in society because I'm doing what everybody's doing, which is um, taking care of themselves financially, stuff like that. And instead, I said, I'm going to chase this thing. I'm going to go into the unknown. And uh, I've just been watching a lot of Frozen 2 with my daughter and wife. And it's like into the unknown, into the unknown. So she loves it. And obviously, it's creeping into my mind. I went into the unknown. And this was really scary, right? And to this day, you know, this podcast, whatever I'm doing, uh, gets me zero dollars into my account and I'm living off of savings. And it's still something that, that I had to learn and deal with. And like you say, recognize the times when I, my mind just goes on this uh, basically rampage of trying to get my soul to break and change course into safety, like you say. Um, so right now I'm in the situation where I'm just being so stubborn so stubborn that it has uh, a lesser effect on me, but it's still in the back of my mind. And, you know, I think that it also makes sense, like we said, to keep some level of fear there. We want to feel fear when that's fitting. But I want to hear your opinion on specifically something like uh, making a living. Um, the if you have a, I mean, it just seems yeah. that you that you thought about a lot of it. Um, that is something that I find, and not just for me, but also for listeners, also for friends. It seems like something that is one of the most powerful forces. It's such an easy story to tell ourselves that we must be safe um, when it comes to to financial matters that it seems especially um, powerful in its, in its uh, ability to hold us back spiritually and mentally. I, 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 I think you're right. And, and, and um, I think money is a function, right? Money is a function, I, at least for me, when I, my, 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 like I've chased after money. And I, I've, you know, while I was teaching for a bunch of years in the classroom, I was also doing real estate and did okay. And then had an opportunity after I left the classroom to go off into the real estate world and, you know, was involved in some deals here and there and, 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 and like fairly large ones and, and, and you know, money. Okay. Did okay. Did, did, did it, it's not what I wanted. We recognize life is short. We figure out what do we want? And money's a function. And how is this podcast helping you get what you really want? That's how it falls into play. Figuring out what do I want? What do, what do I as a human, what do you really want? And what does life look like when you're actually hitting it with details? And the tighter the target, the more likely you are to hit it. And the reason why it's so hard to even define what that is, because we have a human mind that's going to try to steer us away. And now that we understand a little bit, because we were just talking for a little bit and there's no <laughs> action involved with it. But assuming you went through, you know, or you grappled or you now have the new tools in your tool belt of story watch of like, oh, that's just the story. Why do I want that? Right. Like, what do I really want? I want to be free to interview, to find like people, help other whatever it speaks to you, the idea of not letting the stories in our mind trying to stop us from defining what our target is, what we want right now, what we really want. And why do we really want that? We can't do that, honestly, tapping that inner fire, as you said, right? 
that's my goal. My goal is to help people tap their own inner fire, like it's say like oil rig, bringing it up to the surface, harnessing it into daily specific action that when done right and lining up a, as many as we can, don't think just do actions in a week. We'll just keep our gears moving and preserve our bandwidth for our family to do what we really want. Versus working seven, you know, you know, waking up at six and going and, you know, the investment banking or the lawyer, or God bless it, that's what you want. But if you're living it and it's not what you want, and then if we are defining our identity by things we think we might, we want, but our inner fire doesn't want that, that's when there's a lot of breakdown. That's where people start to figure out how to stay safe or, you know, a lot of times addiction comes in, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not because we're on a path and we don't know how to take ourselves off the path. We don't understand why the, oh, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna be the tour guide of the century here. I, I, I want to, I want to create experiences going through, you know, you know, like, Ain Getty and finding beautiful, you know, right before the flash flood comes, obviously, but like, right, like I, the vision, the passion, life is short. What do you want? And understanding that it's very hard to even figure that out if you're not in a strong state. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can, I can totally connect with that. And I also think that one technique that that's helped me deal with uh, moments of high pressure, be it a, a, a driving test or a test at university um, or just generally, you know, climbing to some peak, whether physically or mentally, is the thought that I uh, started thinking, and I'm not sure what age it kind of became part of my arsenal, but just realizing that, hey, why not? Why should I not be uh, one of the experts on X or the people most well-versed in Y or the person who is, you know, among the top in being a tour guide. Why not? I don't lack anything. Um, and there is always room for another person who's great at what they do. And you are actually very, very likely to become uh, to belong to the top tier in whatever you decided to do, if it's something that you're truly passionate about. Yeah, but I would give you a little bit of pushback, though, mm -hmm. because the language of scarcity is powerful, like the language of abundance. Both of those are mindsets, and they're incredibly, they're incredibly, like they're incredibly contagious. So, even by saying "Why not me?" for saying. I will be the best, right? Why not me? It's in response to why can't I do that is not full steam at the hull of the boat going through the water. Like I will be, I am going to be, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I want. This is it. It's kind of like, you know, I played a lot of basketball in my life. I'm 44, almost 45. Don't play as much. Would like to, right. We'd like to play with the old guys now. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, but when I go to the free throw line, there's something that kicks in that there is muscle memory that if I square up, I bend my knees, I move my body and I feel I could probably make four out of five consecutively a little bit warmed up. I could probably just boom, go into that. There's we're human creatures, but we're also human beings. So remember I was talking about the flow before. Yeah. I recognized the flow was the one was one of like this, like secret. It was like a secret treasure. If I could just find the flow stuttering would be gone. Right. But there's something about being in the flow that your being follows you. There's something about being, knowing what you want and making sure that's what you really fucking want at such a level that it brings your inside out like it's a volcano and you could harness it like geothermal harnessing. And it doesn't come from why not me versus it's going to be me. 
do you do you hear what i'm saying yeah 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 absolutely i mean i i can relate when you say that and understand where you're coming from i also think that it's just the uh the gateway or you know if it if it if it takes something for you to understand then it's a good thing to understand that nothing stands in your way and that's where the why not me comes into play but you're right that going forward i want to be positive about it and and just make it happen next or 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 the idea of like when you uncover what it is you really want and it takes time and it could change but when you do it you're you're you first of all you're already doing it okay i mean like you said it before right like you're you're doing this podcast you're doing you're doing it you're you're it takes a certain level of gall to be doing what you're doing and you're leaning into it which is awesome and exciting and you know we have you know we've spoke this is these are i want to be around hungry people because it helps empower me and pushes me right and so that's a really we're social creatures the people who i surround we surround is very you know is very important the idea of um of um being able to like um uh intellectually let go of what's stopping us right that's that's really the idea of story watch how is the story that i can't do it serving me well it's making sure it's keeping me safe from even trying and being let down that's a it's keeping me from being embarrassed for my wife of not doing whatever i'm doing and you just it's kind of like you keep going down that road the more layers you could uncover you know and you start the more you do it again you see the same stories show up again and again and again and and the idea of why story watch i believe is one is a person's greatest weapon when they really get into it because it allows you to a identify what's standing in your way stories created to stand stop you from doing whatever you're doing and it allows you to grapple if not own it if not move it out from what's in front of you and then the fear of oh i can't i can't i i can't do this to some of the greatest fears i see people setting our ceilings what if i am incredibly successful yep what happened then there's uncertainty and my whole life shifts and we inherently our mind's going to keep us away from that so then there's a whole different like dimension we are complex creatures where self awareness is is our creature power how do we right right it's a very thin gray line at that peak that we have to navigate all the time sometimes we fall we get back up whatever analogy you want to use but that story watch when we get to the point that we could have the self awareness to be like hey how is this story serving me right and then it and then and then it becomes like contagious if you start recognize scarcity language versus abundance then you're shifting that in then it impacts everything how you speak to your children how you connect with your spouse your 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 like significant other and and it shifts everything and then you become allergic to it right like i'm allergic to plastic flowers i say I'm like i'm allergic to like it it, it, it Listen, I'm far from perfect, but like I hate being sold to from a like scarcity only five left. I hate that. Yeah, I don't like that. And I'm with you. Yeah, and I think and I think there's something. But listen, look at the world we live in right now, right? It's it's fairly it's fairly incredible to be honest it's 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 harsh and it's scary and we don't know and there's uncertainty one shot two shots masks no mask like there's a lot of chaos around humans right now one thing that's connecting all of us is that like fear is trying to drive a lot if not everything right now especially in america when we have news you can't get you can't trust news because it's 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 a for profit endeavor and the greatest mind it's not just news it's the noise out there now right it's it's when we live in this like technology attention experience economy whatever you want to call it 
people, the greatest thinkers right now are making money, creating experiences that are sucking our focus. So that toll booths are, someone's making money off of our eyeballs, our clicks, our movement, and they don't have our best interests at heart. We're living in that world right now when all of humanity is trying to navigate how do we stay safe and alive. So I think now more than ever is a time for A, if we could grab hold of our own story watch stories we could lean into our fears by even recognizing what we're fearful of and leaning into it versus running away and then having this trying to be in a strong state all the time not reality that's why we measure a week and not a day and not a month but a week right we could always make up a day or two here and there we're able to own navigating specifically now and here's the reality i think i i i I, i've spoken about this before shared this um i see covid like a forest fire it's burning it just comes through some people it hits you don't know it's there's there's that person not this person unclear why Mm -hmm. it's burned away a lot of norms When a forest fire hits, it comes in and burns away all of the dead growth that hasn't been cleared away. In its wake, you have this nutrient-rich soil ripe for regrowth. That's the world we live in now, too. Yeah. Right? And so so it's being able to understand how human minds work, how our mind works. What do we need to do? How do we capture? How do we capture the stories? How do we watch the stories? Yeah. And, I, and, and start to do them specifically now can, un, can do the work to figure out, hey, what do I want right now? Taking into reality and kind of like drawing a circle of a dartboard big and then slowly doing the work to figure out what do I really want? That mm-hmm. dartboard starts, you get smaller circles. And it's not necessarily about hitting that specific target. It's knowing that you're moving towards it. Yeah. Well, one thing that, that came to my mind when you started to, um, to talk about world events, and it brought to my mind uh, politics, which in Israel um, in 1993, there was something that was, there were the first accords, the Oslo Accords that were signed. And in them, it said that in 1999, there was to be a Palestinian state next to Israel. And that would be, that would be closure to many decades of, of war and conflict. And it makes me think of uh, Itzhak Rabin, who was the prime minister of Israel who signed this treaty and other Um, leaders like him. He used the language, um, obviously, as, as any leader as, and orator. He was telling us stories, right? He was uh, storytelling, going on stage and telling stories. But I recognize now that his stories were not ones of fear. They were ones of hope. And what happened, what followed was, of course, his assassination Um, also waves of suicide bombers, his assassination by uh, an, a, a Jew, uh, an Israeli Jew, of course. Um, suicide bombers, Palestinian suicide bombers going up on buses and blowing themselves up. Uh, we had Baruch Goldstein, who was an Israeli Jew, uh, a settler, who went into a mosque and massacred uh, 20-something um, Arabs. So we had all these terrible events that uh, are a terrorist attack. Each and every one of them are acts of terror. And terror is, of course, fear. It gives us more than a story. It gives us something to really fear because that's what we carry in our mind as we board a bus at that time. Is it going to blow up or not? And it made the, the accords crumble. And we should have been celebrating 22 years of an independent Palestinian state and peace, right? Um, So I want to ask you about whether it's 
possible to start having stories in our mind and train ourselves to have stories that are based on hope, not fear. And I say this, it's, it's not so clear to me because the atmosphere in Israel has been for about two decades, one that's very much just follows where the fears take us. So separation, more walls, more borders, more containment, uh, more, um, in some sense, oppression, more intelligence to, to, um, to stop the, the terrorist attacks uh, before they even begin. And I can't feel that it's, it's, it's a net good. It is. We're, we're safer because, as you say, fear is good for that. It will, it will make you more safe. But I also recognize a lot of good things disappearing with that as there are more borders. Now there is less human interaction between people from both sides, you know? So all this uh, preamble and thought to ask you, could we train ourselves to have the stories themselves change into stories that are positive, that really um, steer us towards good things, hopeful? Sure. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. The answer is yeah. But yes. And right. I, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. you know, like Nicholas shout out to him and his like <laughs> improv. Yes. And one, when we're talking about groups of people, leadership is what it's about. That's it. Okay. Um, it comes down for me, it comes down to this. What do you want? What is a human want? Right. We don't do things because of either two things. It comes down to either we don't want to or we don't know how to. And I think when we have generation after generation in which there are things being bred on every side about how to think about others without really experiencing others. Right. There, there, there's, there's some people just don't know. And aside from that, there's the power of one's I, identity, right? The identity of someone is attached to our survival, right? Who we are. It goes back to when we were a little child, four or five. Like, what do we need to do to achieve the connection between our mother or father, Freudian? But where it's, it's also creature. We're creatures, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of our thinking was formed back then. Um, it's a deeply rooted, complicated, generational mess slash, slash uh, opportunity, right? If there was a way to really deconstruct humans coming together and humans and reconstructing in a level of togetherness if, and a level of understanding of like, you know, um, questioning, harnessing your uh, self-awareness or creature power. We all have the same creature power beyond and recognizing, hey, fear, that's your safe mode. Is, is that helping you get what you really want? Well, what do you really want? And if you have enough people doing that, I believe I'm on a mission, I guess. Not, I guess. I am on a mission to help people. More and more people are doing and living that way and then actively following up with specific actions and a game plan for what to do. And then they're measuring and then they get this weekly score, letting them know how good they're doing, how well they're doing towards getting what it is they really want. Then shift starts to happen. Leaders like Yitzhak Rabin, and I was there that year. I was at his like funeral. I navigated the 18 buses. I know exactly like i I get it. I hear you. Um, yeah, I always think hope is there because you know what? And now more than ever and other things that I'm involved with, with this teacherwarriors.me, which is a variation about this work, but it's specifically geared to the educators. We now as humans are in desperate need of leaders, especially the leaders to rise up, especially those that don't even know that they are leaders. Now is the opportunity. It's like the regrowth is here, right? It's 
there's going to be people that are going to take advantage. And then there's going to be people that are going to be like, enough is enough. Life is too short. You know how many doses of life is too short is getting, you know, people are getting hit by right now again and again in different ways, COVID bombs or whatever. You, that's also opportunity. Yet most of us, we weren't taught or trained or have the access to figure out how to, in a very simple first principle, not heavy jargon of psychology, of of global events, of like political science, just if we could simplify. I believe that level of shifting can really happen. I, that- I, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And I totally uh, think the same, you know, for me, when COVID hit, I had been working as a tour guide for just one year was all I got to do uh, guiding tours. But I worked nicely and made good money. And still when COVID hit, I was almost relieved that this thing kind of happened to me and put the, um, made the picture so clear that now is a good opportunity, as you say. And, you know, for whatever reason, maybe I'm just lucky. I immediately recognized it as, as an opportunity and not as a threat and seized on it. And like you say, so much uncertainty today, I think you hear about something like the great resignation where employers of um, uh, menial jobs, basically menial jobs, are having a hard time finding working hands. And I rejoice at that. I I rejoice at the fact that uh, swaths of, of the population are going for what they want and and maybe they don't know what they want yet but they at least know what they don't want i know that's that's a scarcity mentality so i'm getting it um but um but it's interesting and i think i think it's just the time is is exactly right for you to be for for you to be um spreading that message into society and hopefully there will be a, a rebuilding uh you know, and it's it's just like you say. And ever since you mentioned the forest fire uh, metaphor, I've been thinking about the the fungi because they are the ones that go and really just uh, gorge on that dead material. They are the pioneers that go and do the cleanup, and then everything is richer for growth. And I don't know. I'm just sharing now random. No, and there are and there are also and there and there's a lot more, you know, there's a lot more that we know now over the last, I guess, five, 10, 15 years around like the fungi universe and like the Michael, the like mycology and how we're all mm-hmm. how it's all interconnected. And 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 that's why I believe that any any hope, any hope starts with understanding first and foremost, we are human creatures that live in this world with a lot of other creatures and like other creatures have their uniqueness. So do we. And if we think when we lose focus of that, that's when things get really upside down and it's very simplified, but I think when in doubt you have to simplify and we overly complicate situations so that people can stay safe, not always getting what we really want. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think it's it's time for us to uh, to wrap this up, the, the conceptual discussion, but I, I do wanna say that I, I think um, that you're so right. There has never been a better time for us to collectively lean into the fear because it is all around us, uh, our whole society, is fearful together. And we built quite an individualistic society that kind of uh, conquered and divided us. And we were each on his own journey with their own fears. And we probably should not have, uh, we probably didn't even get the message that it's something that we should talk about because who wants to be that person who goes out there and is being vulnerable and sharing it. 
but now it's undeniable for us as a society. These are times when we fear, and this is also the best time as a society to lean into it. Would you agree? Absolutely. And this is also when, you know, when risk, you know, risks, risk takers of, you know, there, there are these guiding principles. Number two for me is seeking authenticity versus, you know, like versus approval. Having grown up with a stutter and just wanting to be, a, you know, my own inner approval of just be part of the norm. I don't want to stand out, no stand out. And now it's like, that's not what's needed now. What's needed is people living from their inside out way of living. And it's, it's also becoming harder and harder because there isn't any guidance, right? And there's so much noise that's designed to guide us. And I mean, listen, uh, I'm not going to trash technology or social media. Like the ballpoint pen was once the most insane piece of technology around. It's what you do with it. But if you're having like Instagram now or whatever is, is, is now coming up, uh, coming out and that they knew the harm they were causing teenagers in their development and they didn't stop it or shift it because as you were talking about the like the the idolatry of money that's not okay i'm not for that we're not for that it's time for change and i think enough people have gotten hit with a heavy dose of like oh my god life is really short Working and money is not the end all be all. It's a function that we all need. But there's more. And this, you know, the great resignation or that shows that there's a lot of people that are hungry yep. for something else. And I'm, I'm, I, I, I think it's tremendous opportunity right now. I just uh, remember when, you know, the way to shift it because the mind is going to figure out they want me dead. So let me go and fight. And it gives people an identity a value at a time when there's so much uncertainty right now, people are fighting for masks when they even believe or don't believe they can't let go of it because it's attached yeah. to their identity and identity is certainty. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it, 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 it's tremendous opportunity. And listen, it, it, we, we, what, what, what kind of podcast at the end of 2021 would it be if we didn't also mention web three and the whole world <laughs> of crypto specifically with what you're saying? Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So, so, and listen, and that's also where, you know, I try to package some of the work that I've been doing over the last few years into this thing called the like courage muscle training in which, um, Again, leaning into my fear, packaging it up. It's in a notion template. It guides you through the concept of how to grow your courage muscle in practical, learn, create, use. That's the like educational structure with anything I touch. What are you learning concept? Creating for you and then going out in the world and using it. There's the courage muscle. There's the farming, the strong state. Specifically, what do you need to do it? And there's a tracker lined up. And then there's also, it guides you through story watch. That's a power. It, it, it's like, really, it's when people do it, it shifts, everything opens. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. So yeah, I think I think I love the, the forest fire metaphor, which we used. And I think that the seeds that are already dormant that could benefit from the forest fire are waiting for um, people with the message that are going to decompose what's there to prepare the ground, to make the nutrients available. And that's how I see your work. And I hope you're flattered by being compared to a mycelium because it's totally a compliment. Yeah, I would love you to, to actually share with everyone listening uh, where you can be found, whether it's your thoughts, ideas, workshops, um, and everything you do. So feel free to list it all. Sure. Um, so uh, Twitter is my, you know, it's my verse. <laughs> it's where I exist, I guess. And I'm at DA Green 77. Um, you could check out this Courage Muscle training. 
just go to couragemuscle.com. Um, right now it's priced at, it's priced at $49. Um, y'all is going to have a special coupon code that he doesn't <laughs> know about. We're going to do that. Um, uh, so we could track it. And then, uh, what that comes with is, uh, monthly, there are these courage muscle jams that anyone can sign up for, right? They could come and the idea is that you learn the stuff on your own. You kind of grapple with it. You come and you ask questions and, uh, having done this for a, you know, a bunch of years, the things that we learned is that those jams in which people are coming and they're scared and, but they're bringing real people learn the most. I get the most when people, you know, are there. And then, and then, um, that's a good starting point. Um, you know, like couragemuscle.com and find me on like Twitter. Um, don't want to overly complicate the other things that I'm involved with, but, um, Hey y'all, you know, you're, 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 you know, from the first time we, you know, our worlds kind of collided and, and, um, you know, I think you do know what you want and I think you're actually <laughs> doing it. So it's pretty terrific. And I really am grateful for being a part of it in one small link on your chain of like, wow, let's look back in two or three years from now and see what, you know, December 28th in which my mom would have turned, turned, turned 84 when she would speak, she would get up there she would look at like everyone she would take her time and she would go i want you all to know you're all stronger than you think and then she would just launch into her story and i think that's an important message for everyone to know as well that's amazing and that's that's such a nice and welcome coincidence and thank you for sharing that um yeah same here dan it's been it's been amazing i enjoyed it so much i hope it won't be the last um it certainly won't be the last conversation that we're having and i wish you a beautiful day going forward and until next time thank you thank you so much Aya. i look forward all right, everyone, that was my conversation with Dan, which I enjoyed very much, and I hope you did too. And if you've noticed, he did promise to give a coupon code to listeners of the Deep Dive episode. You can actually go now to CourageMuscle.com, and upon checkout, enter the coupon code Deep Dive, just like that, no spaces, to get 50% off. So that's a special offer that he's made for listeners of the podcast. I'm super excited about it. You can also go to bit.ly slash courage muscle and this should give you uh, the discounted product on Gumroad directly. Well, I hope you enjoyed and until next time, uh, this was me.